One of the most underrated fighters in the entire UFC is finally breaking through, finally being recognized for the talent that he is. In the albeit controversial decision, uh, for sure, for sure. Uh, but Josh Emmett gets it done. He now breaks into the top five of the featherweight division. One guy that has always been good, but always been hampered by injuries. All it feels like he gets a performance of the night bonus, and then he gets injured. Off for a while, comes back, but it, now it's. It's almost, uh, you know, as the boys over at Team Alpha Male, and shout out, to, shout out to Team Alpha Male, shout out to Coach Joey Rodriguez, super underrated guy in the, in the uh, profession as well. It is what there is in the whole week they were saying, it's our time, and it's hard to say that it is not Josh Emmett solely. Um, he's pretty well placed in title contention now. We're getting some weird news when it comes to Nate Diaz once again. The whole saga continues. Uh, will the UFC cut him? Is he going to fight again in the octagon? Who the hell knows? Apparently, Dana White thinks he should fight Jake Paul, but he's not going to cut Nate Diaz, so I have no idea what he means by that statement. And then the most infamous person in all of MMA, arguably, at least the most infamous manager in sports, that uh, the shiny-headed man known as Ali Aladdabada is... Talking some weird stuff when it comes to Kamar Usman once again, and uh, apparently he's going to be light heavyweight champ by the end of the year. Uh, I, I I have no idea here, Blake. But uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Of course, I'm your host, Ross Allen, joined alongside by the best in the business, Blake Campbell. This is UFC Talk 92, and Blake, how are we feeling after what was nothing short of a remarkable card topped off by the hometown guy getting it done? Yeah, it was a fantastic card. Uh, tied the... You know, TKO record, I believe, mm -hmm. for most TKOs in a night. Uh, can't complain whenever that happens. I mean, <laughs> it started off with, I think, yeah. three KOs right off the bat. Yep. And and really, like, pretty much no pause the whole the whole night. I mean, it, <clears throat> even the fights that went to decision were just pretty entertaining, I would say. Well, I guess even, the only pauses the, uh, came in the broadcast because they had a lot of air time yeah. to fill. <laughs> yeah, a lot of first round finishes. So it got that bad was, some of the time, man. It felt like a felt like typical PFL pacing. It wasn't great. They, they they earned their money that night, you know. They uh the fighters didn't they obviously didn't want to mess around. They wanted they had some plans to get to that night. So Hey, I see a, a lot good, of after parties fights, in though. Texas, man. I, I don't know. If I was them, I'd be trying to get out there and go get some extra barbecue. You feel me? That's what I'm saying. I'd, I'd be trying to finish the fight as fast as possible and go hit as many restaurants as possible afterwards. Go get some brisket? How? Okay, Blake. Um, we're already going to get to a tangent here. If you can only choose, like, one one entree is a, it's the best barbecue place possible, where are we getting? Uh... It, yeah, definitely have to be something brisket or something mm -hmm. tri-tip, I'd, I'd mm -hmm. have to say. Tri-tip. You know, if you talk to a Texan, uh, especially <clears> my, <throat> my fiancé's parents, they are, uh, they're a Texan, and they are a Texan barbecue through and through. Uh, apparently, the only entree, and so coming, coming, coming from them, Blake, let, I'm going to educate uh, some people here possibly. The only real entree for them is beef, and 90% of the time it is brisket. They consider everything else be a side dish. Ribs are side dish, pulled pork is side dish, chicken, turkey, all side dishes. It's um, it's different culture down there, but damn, do they make some good food. Brisket, you could cut with a plastic fork. My word. Yeah, cool. I can get behind that. Right? Right? Also, I love they just serve white bread. That, that's, that's the thing. I, I, like, I like rolls more than I like just slices of white bread, but... You can take as many as you want <laughs> to get mm -hmm. white bread. Get some. <laughs> hey, barbecue's kind of expensive down there, so you might as well get some food, get some going for you. Um, but we got that. We got UC Vegas 57. Take a look ahead at. It's a main event that looks like it was made by the fans for the fans. Way better than uh, Holly Holm in the main event picture. That's for damn sure. Um, and so we got a whole lot uh, th of that and more to get into today. Uh, but before we kick things off with our uh, um, kind of review of UFC Austin, of course, find all of our great stuff. Go ahead, subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, follow us, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Rumble, um, it really ain't Anchor. Anywhere else you get your podcast from, we're there. Um, we're super present. Hit us up on our social media as well, at 4th and Long Media for both Instagram and Twitter. We're almost at at 1,100 subscribers on YouTube. So please do 
most importantly, do me a favor, but also do yourself a favor and go ahead and hit that subscribe button over on the YouTube. You of course, just find everything all over at the fourth and long.com. But Blake, we're going to hop into things with UFC Austin. Uh, unfortunately, you are going to get all the blame once again. We all know, ladies and gentlemen, every time a fight falls through, that was a banger. It's time to hashtag blame Blake. And Blake, we're blaming you again this week. At least me, me and Chris. You know, shout out to Chris of uh, uh, on Match MMA. Uh, thanks, thanks for cursing this fight once again, Blake uh, uh, of <laughs> Cowboy and Joe. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to take the blame for this, bud. It's okay because I'll is... give it to you anyway. <clears throat> This fight has reached, you know, Tony Ferguson and Habib levels of cursed, so... Well, it's pretty... It's fairly similar, okay, because Cowboy pulled out because of food poisoning, i.e. tiramisu. Then, the uh, opposite opponent pulled out with Joe uh, Lozon, i.e. ACL and knee injuries. Both very similar situations there. Is... It, it, should we be reading into this? Is should we be, you know, food poisoning and knee injuries? It, like, am I going crazy, or is that is this a real conspiracy theory here? Is time <laughs> flat? Is the Earth flat? Are dinosaurs even real, Blake? Tell us. Those are all really deep questions. I don't know if uh, <clears throat> we have enough time to sit down and, and really dive into those. But why do you live? I definitely. I don't think this fight should be booked again. I'll tell you that. I mean, they all right, agree with Dana. It's just, uh, it's not meant to be, you know, just not meant to be. Unfortunately, it was too perfect of a fight for us to get, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, if they did book it again, I'd say maybe, maybe 170, just so like they both aren't cutting too much weight, but I, I don't know how, what goes, what all goes into it. But yeah, that's, uh, especially the whole knee issue with Joe Lowe's on. Hopefully he gets that figured out. Mm-hmm. Um, and is and is all back to full health. Safe to assume Cowboys going to fight again. It just I don't know, I I just don't know who he fights now. Maybe you know the the rematch we all want to see Cowboy versus Conor McGregor welterweight, of course, right? Come on, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one wants to see that. Uh, but with the rest of the bangers here, Blake, uh, the ones that we actually did. Get to watch. Did they hit? Absolutely, 100%. I mean, they didn't last very long. Uh, I mean, maybe the Holland fight yeah. was a little bit was a little bit more of a banger. But, I mean, at least the the way that the Adrian Yanez fight was kind of being marketed. Gosh, you know, kind man. of the bad blood. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Yanez kind of acting as the good guy, shutting up kind of the, I guess... Most people are portraying him as a racist, but mm -hmm. I don't think he's necessarily a racist. He just said some distasteful remarks. Yeah, um, definitely yeah. not defending the dude. Don't don't get me twisted. Uh, don't get canceled, Blake. Uh, the way that it was being built up, like I think it it, it delivered right. Like Yana's went in there, got the finish. Like, it wasn't in his super hometown clean or in his home state. In his yeah, in his home state. So uh, I was I was super impressed with it. Like when you when you go out like that. Uh, you have a lot of hype going into the fight, and then you yep. deliver with a with a great performance. I mean, now he has a number next to his name, so it just speaks for him. The performance speaks for itself. Jump in there, fifteen replacing uh, Rafael Sunsell, I believe. Yeah, which is you know, I think that's fair. Giannis is just, fair. I think he's six and zero now in the UFC if you count the contenders fight. So yeah. pretty he, impressive. Man, his, he's some he good dudes. Great. Look really good on Saturday, man. His boxing is clean as hell. Yeah, he's slick. Um, and then Kevin Holland. I mean, I can't. I don't have enough good things to say about Darce, that guy, man. It's just crazy. This guy just keeps getting better and better, um, and just seems like he's kind of putting it all putting it all together. So I'm, I'm excited to see what he can do in this welterweight division because he's mm -hmm. an interesting body build. Um, and just, uh, I don't know. I, I think if his wrestling keeps improving, he's going to be an issue for some of these guys up there. And that Sean Brady call out is fantastic. It's going to be a really good test mm -hmm. to see, am I ready for these, you know, top level wrestlers as well as it's going to get a, a good number next to his name. If he can win. Yeah. That, that's a call. almost surprised me though. I, I, I guess I just wasn't expecting that uh, him to go that high up, but also it's Kevin Holland. So he's going to do whatever the hell Kevin Holland wants to do. I, 
I think that was a lot of fun. Um, he had a great, um, you know, partner there as well. It takes two to tango. Tim Means was was good. They were, it was it was a fun fight. It was it was a nice yeah. fan friendly fight. And um, you know, obviously those two guys were having a good time in there as well. So that makes you have a good time. And just seeing Kevin Holland bust out a Dar's choke was um, it it caught me off guard. <laughs> well, I mean, he was busting him up on the feet too. Exactly. So I, I think. His whole game was kind of opened up there. He, he had he had whatever he wanted. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a fantastic performance. Do look good. He's now two and zero in the world <clears throat> division. So, got some good stuff coming up for him. Hopefully, he's always exciting. He said he wants to fight what three more times this year. I think. It, yeah, at least two. At least twice. Uh, I I won't put it past him. He could do really whatever the heck he wants because. He's done it before. He'll probably do it again. Um, and then another thing I want to talk about here is uh. Where ultimately do you think – so as a whole, this card was absolutely um, just just ridiculous. I, I really don't know how else to um, – I really don't know how else to describe it, Blake. Um, so we've had some really solid cards, especially Fight Nights. Um, where do you think you would rank this card um, out of the ones we've seen so far this year? Man, it's like maybe – just under London, mm-hmm. but it might have entertained me a little more than London, really. Like, it was really that close. I think the only thing that could have separated this event from London and, like, any other card of the year, probably, is if we got to finish in the main event. Mm. Yeah. That's a good point. It was Because fun- it was a really entertaining fight, don't yeah. get me wrong, but... It did leave a little bit of a bad taste in, I'm sure, a lot of people's mouths. Yeah, it did. Going to a close decision like that. Um, so I think the only way it could have been better is if is if the main event ended in a finish. But either way, I think it's it's got to be up there in the top top three fight cards of the year so far. Maybe easily. that. <clears throat> you, so you've seen um, you've seen London, um, sure. you've seen Austin, and you see two seventy maybe. Just off the top of my head while I'm thinking. Mm, I'd have to yeah, I'd, I'd want to sit down bad. and think In about In terms it of for Fight Nights, man, like, it, it probably well, is... Fight Nights is definitely top two, and top no, two. no question. No yeah, question. That, that, was, that was really freaking sweet. But and events, uh, like cards of the year, it's it's. T- I'd have to really sit down and think about it for a second. It's going to be off the top of my head. Off the top of my head, those are the... And recency bias, obviously, mm-hmm. for Austin, but and London, honestly, those are the two that stand out. If you see London was like, I, I guess it would be a whole different card if it wasn't London. But if you see London wasn't in London, I'd probably say UFC Austin was the best card because a lot of the fun that came from UFC London was just how fast and crazy the, the the fans went there and, and mm-hmm. the fighters went for being in yeah. their home. But uh, so obviously that's going to add to it. I think just objectively from fights and finishes. I would not. I think there's a very safe claim that UC Austin is car of the year. It's definitely up there. <clears throat> it's going to be our top. Damn. Yeah. If we can get a card this year that has eight knock in a second card this year that has eight knockouts, then I, I'd be beyond happy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like like we said earlier, just look at Dana's, uh, <clears throat> you know, bonuses that he gave out. He gave out damn near every every fighter got a bonus on this card that got a finish or, mm-hmm. you know, the main event getting the fight of the night. I think there, there might've been two or maybe three fights that didn't get a, a bonus. Yeah, so there are three, there are a total of four decisions. <clears throat> so three, six fighters didn't get uh, a performance bonus, but it's a 14 fight card. So you're talking about, you know, so over 11 20... of the fighters or yeah. 11 of the fights got bonuses. Exactly. That's, <clears throat> That's that's probably that's probably significant signifying a good, good card, right? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. No. I I I can't get over how good of a night this was. Um. And then you know, speaking of how every finish got fifty thousand, brings up the question, Blake: Should every on every card should every finish get extra fifty thousand? Hmm. I mean, I like. I like giving people more money regardless, but I don't know. It, it, to the this was this was just like a special card, you know, like mm-hmm. where it really did feel like every finish deserved that uh, that bonus because mm-hmm. each finish. I mean, you had the Ricardo Ramos finish, 
even the first fight of the night uh, between uh, Dalkis, right, Chris Dalkis, and and uh, and Roman Dolts Doldzi or whatever. Yeah, that was that was a sweet knee to the head. I mean, that <clears throat> every like finish a was just awesome, bat, dude. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, Phil, the Phil Hawes fight against Duran Wynn Kyle. that was a that was a battering. That, By the way, if you ha- if you haven't seen Duran Wynn's commentary on Instagram, like it's it's a must check. It's like, gold. That is hilarious. It's gold. It's a lot funnier than uh, his comments on his fight. A lot funnier than the comments that DC had on that fight. Yeah, that was weird. I mean, it, yeah, it, I just feel like this was one of those special cards, you know, mm-hmm. where it was just everyone came to freaking fight and. Uh, yeah, nothing, nothing but good things to say about all all the fights, mm-hmm. even the ones I went to decision. Like I said earlier, like they were all really good. Especially, like especially shout out to that uh, Oliveira chick. She yeah. was pretty cool. Yeah, that was a pretty damn good fight she too. Was, she was a fun fight. I, I guess I'm almost more in the middle ground here. <clears throat> I don't think every. I'm not sure if every finish is worthy of an extra fifty thousand. Um, when it comes to fighter pay, I just wish it was a flat, you know, pay, not like a show and win bonus. I think that's kind of dumb. Um, but I, you know, if you can throw this, uh, a 50k for, uh, I think where it should be is maybe not every, um, fight should, or not every finish should get submission of the year or, or sorry, not every, um, finish should get a $50,000 bonus. But I think there should be more than, you know, just the two performance of the nights and five of the night bonuses. I think there, should, there shouldn't be a cap on how many perf- uh, bonuses you should give out, uh, in, in my opinion. If it's worthy, yeah, it's worthy. There should, there should never be a cap on it. <clears throat> I definitely yeah. agree with that. Because like, yeah, like, the, like you're saying, Josh Emmett, that knockout he had over Michael Johnson a handful of years ago, that did not get a, a performance bonus. Wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the only thing with... with giving every single one is I think it gets a little diluted. But, exactly. <clears throat> exactly. Like, or I guess you said diluted kind of pronounced my words a little better there. I know what you mean, <laughs> but, uh, we speak English here, you know? Yeah. If it's a good knockout, if it's a good submission, if it's an impressive performance, I think you should give them the bonus. It should mm-hmm. be documented. It should be like, yeah, that was a sweet freaking that was a sweet performance. That was a sweet finish. Like mm-hmm. it should be documented, but that's exactly. a resume. You know, I, I just think it's like a nice little feather in their cap. But, mm-hmm. but yeah, definitely maybe you don't have to do every single finish, but the sick ones, yeah, you should. It's it's nice. So it's a good feather in their cap. Right. Just just remove the limit to it. I, I think that's <clears> the <throat> perfect solution. You remove the limit so you don't have to pick – you don't have – if you have two uh, finishes that are super close to each other, you don't have to pick between either to actually get the, the bonuses – just give them both the bonus. I mean, they're bo- if they're both the level where you can award them a bonus – just give them a bonus. I really don't think fifty thousand dollars in extra, you know, you know, maybe two hundred thousand dollars a night is going to kill the UFC. Because if it did, um, they probably have some financial issues that that they should sort out amongst themselves. Um, because that <clears throat> probably is not a good sign there. Um, let us know your thoughts on that one, though. No. Uh, where do you lie in this issue? Should everyone uh, should every finish get a performance bonus? Should it just still be you know two performance bonuses and then five the night, or should it be somewhere in the middle? Um, let us know your thoughts on that one. Like I said. Um, and one thing, one other thing, Blake, I got to ask you before we get to the main event here, if you can, if, if you can, I I guess, you know, throw one fighter up there that came out of this card looking the best, who do you think you would, you would pick? Mm, Um, maybe biggest improvement, biggest statement, best performance. Probably Kevin Holland. Yeah. Taking out a veteran like he did, uh, just showing us continual improvement in his ground game. You know, even if he does get taken down, he's getting right back up. Um, yeah, I just I thought it was a really clean performance. Didn't really take a lot of damage. Mm-hmm. Ready for the next one, made a good call out. I think he's uh, kind of making his presence known in that welterweight division. And and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of impressive performances to name off on this card. So it's hard to go with just one. But I think Kevin Holland probably set himself up best for the future. And I think mm-hmm. a close second, obviously, would be Adrian Yanez. Because I think now Adrian Yanez, he's got that number next to his name. He's going to be able to get a guy that's maybe in the in the uh, 10 to 15 range of the bantamweights Frankie interested in fighting with him. Could potentially be a, a guy to go after. Too bad for Frankie, but man. 
Hey, but don't good, ever that, count Frankie out, though, man. Frankie's yeah. still a beast, and he, he might be able to, to you know, uh, exploit some holes in, in Giannis's ground game. Who knows? That'd be a fun scrap. Man, the bantamweight division. Blake, is the bantamweight division the best division in the UFC right now? It's definitely up there. I mean, it's one of my favorites. It's uh, it was very never balanced. a bad fight, man. I just like that people are finally getting on board with the smaller weight classes being just as fun as anything else. Well, I mean, I don't if they weren't before, then they were asleep. So it's this been seems... one of my it's bantamweight's probably been my favorite division. Well, maybe not favorite, but like top two or three since uh, probably 2015, 2016. I mean, any top fifteen fight that you put together <clears throat> is going to be a banger. It really is. Absolutely. No, so so I freaking love it. I, I think if I had to nominate one guy, I really I was very impressed by Walking Buckley um, on Saturday, just because we've seen, you know, it flashes obviously one of the greatest knockouts of all time, arguably the greatest knockout of all time over at, um, on Fight Island a couple uh, Oct- or uh, October ago. Um, I had uh, against Ipa Kasagana, that which was you know just mind blowingly crazy. But he got knocked out, I think, it was a couple fights ago. A lot of people are calling him overrated. And you're not sure exactly like how to feel about this guy. But he comes out against a game opponent and puts together, I would argue, the best performance of his career so far from, you know, from top to bottom, you know, full, fully well-rounded MMA game. Goes out and, I think, former teammate and just kind of, kind of just, man, gets after him. I think he won both rounds there. Um, technically, it went to the third, which the Texas State Athletic Commission screwed some people over big time uh, when it comes to bets on that fight, which is, I, I don't understand that ruling, uh, but um, Joaquin Buckley looked, he looked really good. Now he looks like a legitimate threat as well, um, and um, that eye did, looked horrible, but I really liked that. I li- really liked what I saw from Joaquin Buckley this weekend as well. Um, Maybe pro- proving that he's not overrated. In fact, he might actually be worth the hype. So we're going to see about that one. I would not want to fight him, though. That That's for sure. <laughs> this scary, scary human being. Um, but let's hop into the main event here, Blake, because um, there's big-time implications going down on this one. Is Calvin Cater able to get himself back in tele- into tele- contention? Is Josh Emmett going to finally be able to break through and... He breaks through. So uh, we've already kind of gone over this fight a little bit, but uh, what do you, what do you uh, impress you? Uh, what maybe surprised you most about this main event? And what do you think should be next to Josh Emmett now? Um, I didn't really think anything surprised me. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I think it went kind of the way I thought it was going to go. Like, obviously, Josh had the power advantage. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cater had the reach and kind of, just a a really nice jab that I think Josh was having trouble with all night, clearly. Clearing the um, fifth round, too, to start things off. Yeah, but I think at the end of the day, Josh did a great job of cutting cutting off the angles in the cage, backing mm-hmm. him up against the fence and throwing those power shots and, and just really earning that respect the whole time. Like, I don't really think you ever saw Calvin be able to tee off on him. And, and Josh had a couple times where he teed off, so... It was a really close fight, and it, I would I would hate to be a judge on that one. Um, yeah, I mean I mean that one was a really tough one for me to score. I, I really I, I couldn't give it to you either way, um, without really sitting down and watching it again, probably because I think mm-hmm. in the moment, like I I for sure thought Cater was going to get the W, and then Emmett got the dub, so. I'm a, a I'm a big Emmett fan, opinion. so I'm not, I'm not I'm not complaining. It was, right. it was cool, but I was actually watching it with my girl on mm-hmm. Facetime, and, and she Ooh. was even like, "Oh yeah, it looks like uh, it looks like you know, Cater probably got that dub." And Dang. then Emmett got Look the at dub. You like so. move up in the world. You got a girl to watch some fights with. Yo, you know, I'm, you I'm, know? A fl- I'm gonna flex my fiance real quick. She um, she sent me a Adrian Yanez Dr Pepper meme. Nice. And I was I was. Not only is it kind of a nuanced meme, MMA is a nuanced meme as well. I was very impressed, and and definitely no, she's she's definitely the one I'm going to marry now because that was, mm, so that was something else. Shout out, oh, shout yeah. out to Phoebe, love you. Um, <clears throat> well, wait, 
it's a it's a weird spot for Josh Evans to be right now. Um, just because you know, again, a split decision win where a lot of people don't necessarily think you win. It's hard to put you right into the title picture in, in mm-hmm. a lot of people's eyes. Um, that's what Josh Evans calling for, and I don't think it'd be a horrible choice to put him against the uh, the winner of Holloway and um, Alexander Volkanovsky, which is coming up here real soon. Uh, but also, there's a couple other guys up there. There's Brendan Allen that probably deserves a title eliminator fight. There's also that fight coming up really soon between Ortega and Rodriguez. You mean, you mean Arnold it, Allen? It was, sorry, what did I say? You said Brendan Allen. I was like, oh, my bad. <laughs> no, <laughs> a little bit bigger. That guy's a little too big for this weight class. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. It makes it's not though. fair. Right? Uh, Brent <laughs> Allen, also fantastic there in his own right. But yes, yeah. Arnold Allen, um, take a look. Like, he should probably be getting a title eliminator fight. The but winner, he's, like, where's he ranked at right now? Like, number five, number six? Um, number seven? I think he's going to be number six with everything being just. No, sorry, he's number seven. Uh, the yeah. Korean Zombies, See, number like six. That. Calvin Cade, number five. Josh Hammond, number four. Um, Let me put it to you this way, bro. Josh Hammond, man. <clears throat> Like let's go let's go over the people he's beat to get to this point right like since mm-hmm. the Jer- is it since the Jeremy Stevens fight I think is his last one yeah that he's he five lost. and zero he fought Michael Johnson KO'd his ass Mirsad Bektik TKO'd his ass Shane Burgos fight of the year basically was with no fight knee. of the night that night no knee in the like since the first round basically no knee right? and broken leg yeah and and uh, won the unanimous decision on that. Uh, Dan Ige, late last year in December, unanimous decision, dropped him with the freaking jab. That was sick. First punch of the he, night, I think, too, that he landed. Yeah, yeah and, then he, and then he beats Calvin Cater, who is just a freaking stud. Like, the only guy who that just made like him look Ige bad is Max Holloway. Map. Yeah. Like, the only guy that's that's beaten uh, Cater, I'm, I'm pretty sure, is, is uh, maybe Holloway and Zabit. I don't know if it's been anyone else. That's, like, the only two off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Let me fact check myself really quick. <laughs> yeah, and then and then way back in the day, Hanato Moicano. That was like in 2018, though. That's still not a bad. But, but he's still a savage too. He's a savage as well. Exactly. So, I, mean, I think Emmett on this five oh five win streak with two phenomenal finishes, three big time dubs against game opponents that are just delivering fights of the night. You know, like two out of mm-hmm. three times it's fight of the night. Was Danny Gay? I don't think it was. No, but no, was, he didn't get anything for that. There. But it was still a great fight. Um, I I think his his resume speaks for itself. I think worst case scenario, you maybe make him fight. Like it all depends on what Volkanovs. Like how does he get out of the Holloway fight? Is he healthy? Is he good? Mm-hmm. What are his plans? Is he going to try and do some weird shit where he moves up weight class? Or even if Hollow if uh, Holloway wins, Josh Evan probably <clears> gets screwed too. Yeah, that one would be interesting. Well, I don't know. I don't think they're going to run that fourth fight right away. I don't think they would. Yeah. I think they kind of give it the Figueredo Moreno treatment. Um, but then, like I was going to say, I think the worst case scenario, you got to give him the winner of that Holloway, or uh, excuse me, is it Ortega and Rodriguez, right? Yeah, that's the one. I think that's the only other fight that you, you know. Could, but the crazy you, thing you is, that I, I love where you're going here because no matter what, if no matter who wins in the style picture, no matter who wins between Brian Ortega and Yair Rodriguez, Josh Emma is real like. The only guy that hasn't fought any of these guys yeah. before, and it's definitely exciting. He he was talking about you want some new blood in the, in the title picture. I say give it to him, and honestly, I think he could be a really interesting matchup against. Um, uh, um, maybe I was just going get ahead of myself with the predictions, but I, I assuming that um, Alexander Volkanovsky is still the champion after this fight, um, which I I kind of think he might be. Um, but assuming that's that's the case. Josh Emmett is a really interesting test for Alexander Volkanovsky. Alex, uh, yeah. Volkanovsky hasn't fought the guy with the power of Josh Emmett, hasn't fought the guy with the wrestling of Josh Emmett. Um, Josh Emmett has a hell of a, um, of a pace that he could put on as well. For how much power he throws, Josh Emmett throws a lot. You don't really <laughs> see that all too often. So he <laughs> provides a lot of challenges for Alexander Volkanovsky, and he's a different opponent than Volkanovsky he's ever gone up against before. So I think this would be a really cool fight to see. I, I am I am on board for, uh, for this one. I don't know if yeah. you could beat Alexander <clears throat> Volkanovsky, but I think he proposes a, 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 cha- a big challenge for him. Like, there's one thing that you know for sure with Josh Emma is he's going he's gonna to bring the heat. It's not going to be a boring fight. Oh, he's going. <laughs> like, it's going to be a war. So Either I, I there's going to be a knockout or it's going to be, you know, a, a three to five round banger. 
Yeah. So I don't know anyone who wouldn't want to watch that fight. Like, they're just kind of weird. Whether it be mm-hmm. Holloway or Volkanovski, I think that would be a, a fantastic fight. And I think he's put in his, uh, I think he's put in his dues and, and he's, uh, he should be able to get that shot. I just think it's time. Mm-hmm. What would you rather see, though? Because Volk is something about if he defends, he wants to fight Oliveira uh, for a chance to become a double champ. Would you rather see <clears throat> Emmett versus Volk or Volk versus um, Oliveira? I'd rather see Emmett versus Volk. I think there's some, there's a lot of stuff in the lightweight division that has to get settled. Like mm-hmm. we got the Makachev Oliveira fight. We got McGregor making his return. We're going to see how that shakes things up. We got Chandler back on the rise. Poirier wants revenge. You got Gaethje still out there looking mm-hmm. around. You know, he's kind of, you know, hanging out, wait, waiting to see where the dust settles. Um, I just think there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of different things that you could you could go, like different directions you could go in the lightweight division. I don't think uh, <clears throat> put Volkanovski in the mix is really a, a necessity at this point. Like, it just doesn't need to happen. Exactly. I, I agree. And I don't think he's a big enough name, really. Like, I don't think anyone's going to be really that intrigued by a Volkanovski and, and Charles Oliveira fight. Like, it just doesn't sound that fun to me. Which kind of sucks, because I think Alexander Volkanovski doesn't get as much respect as he deserves. He's one of the... He really is on pace to be one of the greatest to ever fight. <laughs> yeah, well, just dominate your weight class. I don't know why people have to keep trying to get second belts. Like, just do your do your own weight class. Oh, you would stay in your lane? Stay in your lane. I don't know. That's just my opinion, though. Maybe, maybe a lot of people disagree. Who knows? I kind of like the whole stay in your lane thing. Yeah, it's it, it keeps things a little bit more simple. That that's for damn sure. It doesn't hold stuff up, and it's like, damn, now you have two divisions on hold. And Volk can even like, go in, if he defends against you know um, Holloway. He could fight Emmett. Even if he defends against there, I don't know. Maybe you could give him triple C. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> technically a possibility there um well, well, well i don't know about that one but i i guess uh i i, I guess we'll see but uh let's know your thoughts on the main event here should josh emmett be next in line for a title shot we definitely think uh blake definitely thinks that he should be and i am 100 percent on board <clears throat> with his argument here let's get some fresh blood in the title um contendership picture and let's see Volkanovski continue to prove himself against um, different names. And that, that's what I'm absolutely here for. Um, but before we get into our uh, preview for UFC Vegas 57 taking place this weekend, it's time, ladies and gentlemen, for What the Blank. Of course, this is the part of the show where we say what the blank and have Blake fill in the blanks and give whatever the blank he wants to say. Um, of course, I got three statements for Blake, and it's up to him to fill in the blank, either the beginning, the middle, or the end of the statement, and the blanky blank, 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 with the blank, blanket on the blank, with the blank. Uh, boy, here we go, but uh, kind of talk about some of the things I kind of hinted at earlier between Kamara Usman, some currently ex- super exciting fighters, and the whole Nate Diaz situ- situation. We're going to hop into that here, uh, because statement number one, Blake, is that Kamaru Usman can beat blank top 15 heavy, light heavyweights. Uh, <clears throat> top 15 heavyweight, light heavyweights? Yep. Ollie thinks he could be like the top five. Which is, um, I don't know, man. Hmm. The light heavyweight division. So we got Yuri Glover, Jan, Alexander mm-hmm. Rakic, Mohamed Ankalaev, Anthony Smith, Thiago Santos, Dominic Reyes, Paul Craig, Vulcan Ozdemir, Jamal Hill, Nikita Krylov, Ryan Spann, Johnny Walker. He might be able to beat Johnny Walker. Yeah. Here, let me let me from 15th to to champ. Let me run through this and, and see what we think. Just um, get, say yes or no for whatever it immediately pops into your head. Okay. Does I basically Kamar- did just now. Yeah. I, I think it's Kamar- just Usman one beat, person. Uh, not even Dustin Jacoby? Dustin Jacoby is pretty gnarly, dude. Jimmy Crute? No. Just maybe Johnny Walker because of Johnny Walker's fight style? <laughs> just because Johnny Walker's, yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I, don't, I don't have a lot of faith in that guy anymore. 
Why do you think? But Kyle's he's a big ass comments, dude too. Man. So I mean, that would that would be a huge size mismatch. <clears throat> well, I, I guess Usman is a big welterweight, and I could see him at two hundred five. That's two pounds, weight classes but... up though, and it's not like two ten pounds. It's like that's twenty five pounds above. Just just the thirty five. You're good at math. Twenty five would be ninety five. Yeah, so thirty five. Well, thirty six <laughs> technically. If you want to be technical. Oh, if you want to be, well, I guess it'd be only for title shots. So, let's say with thirty-five. Well, you're saying just you're saying just just in fine, general, like fine, weights. okay, fine. We'll give you the thirty-six. Okay, jeez, stupid. No, uh, asshole. <laughs> Dummy. I, I guess the whole only conversation is why light heavyweights because they don't want to run into him with middleweight. He'll just pass over Izzy to let Izzy keep doing his thing there in middleweight. But I. I really feel like this is just kind of come out of left field. Like this whole talk from Ali and Kamar Usman fighting light heavyweights. I, I, I don't see a need. I don't see the ability, and I just don't see the the desire for that as well. Why do Why do you think they're talking about this? No idea. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Because <clears throat> I, I don't think he beats. There's no way he beats Yuri, right? No. There, I I just told you there's no way he beats anybody besides yeah. possibly Johnny Walker. <clears throat> Those guys are just too big. They're going to be cutting two two oh six two oh five. He's going to be staying right around that, you know, size probably. Yeah, I I he just can't don't be get too it. much higher than that already if he's cutting to one seventy. Mm-hmm. This Ollie is so annoying. Uh, you know what? One thing I'll give him credit for, he's really good at keeping his name and his fighters' names in in conversations. And I think that's really all it's about is just yeah. getting people talking. Yeah. Well, I guess we gotta start hyping Kamara Usman uh, before his rematch against Leon Edwards at UFC two seventy eight. Which actually, depending, on, I'm I'm waiting till uh, depending on because that is like a four and a half hour drive for me. I am going to see what ticket prices are like uh, because I might have to might have to hop on over to Salt Lake City for for a fight night for a pay per view hmm. because I don't know if they'll ever have a pay per view in Salt Lake City again. That seems like the most random place to have an MMA event. I I, I don't understand. They got some nice arenas though, some nice facilities. So I don't know. I, I guess we'll see on um, that one. Uh, but statement number two, Blake. Is especially this is something I want to talk about because uh, uh, going off in UFC Austin, it was a insane um, card filled with a lot, of, like tons of super exciting fighters. So with that being said, segment number two, your top three most exciting fighters currently are blank. <clears throat> um, for sure, gonna have to go with the boy Sugar Sean. Big fight coming up here in a couple weeks. Most exciting fighters. Maybe not the best, but the most exciting. I don't know, like, a lot of the names that come to mind are in the bantamweight division. Yeah, going back to the bantamweights. Because, like, right now, Cheeto, I feel like, is kind of on another level. Mm. And then... Hmm. It's kind of a tough one nailed down, isn't it? Yeah, to not... To just think off the top of my head, it's pretty tough. Right? Uh, You're going to the bantamweights, but I might immediately go to the lightweight division. Who would you say? Honestly, man, it, it you can make the argument that the current top three most exciting fighters right now are Charles Oliveira, Justin Gaethje, and Michael Chandler. Chandler's definitely up there for me too, especially after that last. Like his, if he if he's getting a finish, he's and really even in the in the Gaethje fight and, and him getting finished in the Oliveira fight, like all of his fights have been just mm -hmm. electric. So yeah, especially I can with Oliveira's title fights, every in every fight. I've I've been out I've been out of my seat, you know. Mm -hmm. It's hard to do that. Yeah, no, Oliveira is definitely up there as well. Those oh. are all good picks. 
Yeah, those honestly might be my top three. Yuri Prohaska is an exciting fighter, for sure. Yeah. Just wish he fight more. <laughs> I know, he only fights like once a year. Yeah, once or twice. Hopefully it's different as a champ. We can see him start running through yeah. some people. Hopefully he gets one towards the end of the year. Sean's up there. I guess Connor. Connor is an exciting fighter, but we just haven't seen him for a Not while. Not recently, though. Mm-hmm. Well, the fights have been ex- kind of exciting. Not the last one. I mean, yeah. the the most recent fight yeah. was just not... It didn't really have enough time to really get into it. It was so lackluster. Oh, that was such a bummer. Uh, yeah. You know, his second fight with Dustin was really was exciting. Seemed to mm-hmm. get slept like that. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, you would you stick with the, with the maybe Piotr Jan? For going with your bantamweights, Adrian Yanez. No, no, uh, no. I, I was good off bantamweights after that. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. I'd probably have to piggyback off you and say Chandler because yeah. every single one is just fantastic so far. Dude really does not give a damn about his health and well-being, but he, he sure is. He sure is exciting, man. I love him. Yeah. I love him for that. You you gotta appreciate a guy that doesn't care about his own health and just puts it on for the fans. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't think he deserves much of the hate that he really gets here. Um, and speaking about an exciting fighter as well in some of his fights, let's talk about statement number three because the UFC will blink Nate Diaz. Um. Let him fight again? I don't know. <laughs> what do you think they're going to do here? Because I have no idea what Dana White's going to do. And we haven't really known for like the last six months, year, maybe. Yeah. Um, I think he probably gets to fight his contract out. I don't I don't know why he wouldn't. It's, it is just a weird situation. I feel like we talk about it every week, so I, I really don't know. It's, it's one of those weird conundrums that... I don't really think anyone has a pulse on it except for the ones that are directly involved in it. And they do a good job kind of playing their cards close to their, is it close to their chest? Yeah. Is that what the saying is? Yeah, that's the one. So I have, I have no idea what's going on with Nate. I hope he gets to fight his con. That's what I hope is he gets mm-hmm. to fight his contract out with the UFC. Cause I think there's, you know, still a, a, a handful of fights out there that are, that really interest me. Namely the uh, Connor trilogy, but I, at this point, it's looking highly unlikely we get that. Yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll freaking see with that. I don't know. That's that's a mystery for me. You know, I have Blake, no idea on that. I'm going on limb here. So, what's going to happen? Stick with me. We've seen all this beef with Nate Diaz and Dana White. Dana White holding Nate Diaz back. You know, Nate Diaz wanted to fight, almost wanted to do like this celebrity kind of exhibition fight or whatever. With Jake Paul. What's really going to happen here, Blake, is we're going to see Nate Diaz versus Dana White in the UFC. Pay-per-view. Main event. Yeah, we're down with that. And the winner gets control of the UFC. Or at least Dana gets to keep his position. um, Or Nate Diaz can take over president of the UFC with a win. Yeah, hey, that's a win-win right there. <laughs> Imagine Nate Diaz running the UFC. That'd be sweet. I you wouldn't be able to understand the press conferences. We need a full-time translator. Maybe maybe that one guy I, I forget his name, but he's uh, he does a lot of the Portuguese and Brazilians fight. Um, uh, the Portuguese speaking fighters. Um, uh, that uh, that guy with the brown hair, who is my favorite translator, he could probably do a great time translating Nate, uh, Nate Diaz. I, I would I would like that. Hmm. <laughs> Does a good job. Probably could do well with that one. Oh, man. But let's know what you guys think. Can Kamaru Usman be any of the current top 15 light heavyweights? Uh, who, in your opinion, is the most exciting fighter on the roster right now? And what is the UFC going to do with Nate Diaz? Let us know. Sound off in the comments or hit us up over on socials on Twitter and Instagram at 4th Long Media. But we're going to cap things off here with the take, take a little preview of UFC Vegas 57. Unfortunately, we have to return to the apex. But it is what it is because we get a heck of a scrap taking place in the main event of this one with some uh, probably a top 10 spot in the lightweight division on the line. Um, 
But let's take a look here at the card we got going on between Armand Tsrukian. There we go. And and Matias Gimrat. Uh, We get uh, some great kind of almost underrated fights on here. We get another uh, Tiago Moises, who is a a solid fight on this one. We get to see the return of a couple fighters. Um, And then this is one of them. uh, I mean, we can see the great... Brian Kelher taking place in this one. And uh, the um, recently streaking Vanessa Demopoulos is, is well fairly new to the UFC. And one guy I really want to shout out because speaking of Coach Joey Rodriguez and Team Alpha Male from UFC Austin, another one of their great fighters in Halion Paivia is fighting on this card. And this guy is a banger machine. I believe his last fight was against Blake's Sugar Sean O'Malley. Um, didn't it go Halion's way uh, uh, for sure? But. Still, uh, he's an exciting fight nonetheless. But, Blake, let us know, fingers crossed, without curses, the top of three fights that we are all going to be looking for uh, forward to on Saturday. Uh, the three fights that I'm thinking are going to deliver are going to be Chris Curtis versus Hidolfo Vieira. Uh, it's going to be Umar Nurmagomedov versus Nathan Manis. Mm-hmm. And Neil Magny versus Shavkat Rachmanov. That should be a sweet one. I think all three of those fights have some really good potential. Uh, some really skilled uh, combatants are, are going to be competing in those bouts. So I'm, I'm excited to watch those guys throw down. Yeah, I love the fix here. Shavkat Rachmanov uh, undefeated against a, a... This is a pretty sweet matchup with Neil Magny. This is one where it could kind of... It's almost like uh, we all know Neil Magny was a guy that has been, or at least was one of the two, calling out Hamza Chumayev a crap ton. And so this almost feels like um, diet, um, <laughs> diet Hamza Chumayev in, in Shavkat Rachmanov in, in terms of a fight like this. Super high-level striker, but also with some good wrestling behind him as well. I think this is going to be a great test for either guy. Could really propel, uh, propel Shavkat up the uh, up the rankings here. And I love Chris, that action man, Chris Curtis, is back. Of course, he took over the UFC by storm. Um, you know, knocking out in consecutive fights, Brendan Allen and Phil Haas. That's no joke. Um, so I, I'm excited to see where he, where he goes from here against some, it, probably in not an easy opponent for sure, but almost maybe a easier test than the last two fighters he's gone up against in, in Rodolfo Vieira. Potentially. But also, man, uh, should be a fun one. What do you think about this main event, though? Super interesting one here in terms of the rankings. We got um, number 11 ranked Armand uh, Tsukarian uh, taking on 12th ranked Matias Gamrat here. There's uh, Does the winner of this fight get a top 10 spot um, with you know Connor, Tony, and Rafael Fiziv taking place in number 8, 9, 10, respectively? I think it depends how they get it done. Mm. <clears throat> But, yeah, I mean, Sarukian and Gimro, they're both really talented guys that I think uh, I think it's not often you see two guys that are relatively newer to the UFC. I mean, I know sarukian has been around for a couple of years at least, but it seems like they're still pretty new to the top of the division. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of weird they have these guys facing off, I feel like, this early. But It's going to be Gimro's fourth fight in the UFC. Yeah, so, I mean... Two, two really hot, I don't want to say prospects because they're contenders basically yeah. now. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it just kind of depends, I think, if they get it done in a certain way. It, they, it could really shoot them up a few spots. If it's a close decision, it could just maybe be like a, a one-spot bump. I don't know. The guys that are around them have a lot of hype around them, and Tony Ferguson, Conor McGregor. Uh, really the only guy with probably not a ton of hype is – Fazeve, and that's just because he hasn't fought recently. Even though he still has some hype behind him, though, too. He still has some hype behind him. So, I and mean, we get, we get, I'm pretty sure we're getting Fazeve, uh, um, main event coming up a little bit soon, right? Yeah, um, here in a couple, so in about three weeks, uh, after UC 276, it's Rafael Dos Arnos against Rafael Fazeve. That's, that's a main event right there. Damn. <laughs> Hopefully things are going to shake up the lightweight division here soon. Battle of the Raphaels. Right? Loser has to change the name. I I wouldn't be opposed to that. I <laughs> <laughs> Winner takes all. Win- 
Oh, that'd be great. Oh, man. We're, we need some dudes with some nice hair. We do a hair versus hair match once again. It's uh, hard with some of these guys. There's a lot of ball fighters in the UFC. I guess it makes it easier when, when it comes to, you know, fighting. You could, uh, Max Holloway say you could probably slip out of a guillotine a lot easier. Uh, so that has to help. Less friction. Yeah, less weight. Less <laughs> weight. Well, we saw that with Jeremy Stevens last week. Man, he yep. looked like a different human being without a, without his hair and beard. Yeah, he looks a little scary. <laughs> hey, man. Apparently it worked. He got the dub. So first one PFL, I think, like his first win in like his last six fights. I good think. for them. So, good you know, for, good him. for him. He, I, I never really You're not. Shoving uh, people at, uh, you know, stare downs anymore. It's to actually fight. I never uh, really hit on the man too much. I just unfortunately that Conor McGregor ruined the man. Um, but you know, I think that I think that meme's almost running its course at this point. I think it's a, uh, I think the who no, the it's always going to be gold. The, the gift though, I, I I don't know, man. It's, it's not getting the gold. same same love on 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 the Twitter replies anymore as it used to. Yeah, but I mean, I think it's always going to be gold in terms of like just specific conversations and stuff like that. Never going to go away. It's always going to be with them. The, the one is, is that the greatest meme in UFC history? It's definitely up there. Maybe, maybe that. Uh, Tony Ferguson's uh, "Hold on, brother, I'm talking." It's another good one. It's another good one, man. There's some good ones. There's some. There's some all-time bangers there. Maybe we'll have to rank the greatest. You see? Oh, oh, I don't know, Blake. I don't know if anyone tops the. That's fucking illegal. No, nah, I kind of like who the fuck is that guy. Yeah, other than that. fair enough. We're, we're, okay, with those with those three right there, rank him. Uh, illegals last, and Fook is first. Okay, fair enough. I guess we're not one hundred percent on the same page, but you know we've been on the same page with a lot of the stuff tonight. So I I, I think uh, we're both like minded individuals here. But uh, you know, last thing here, who comes uh, in the main event? Who takes home the victory here in uh? Potentially moves up the lightweight division. Mm. It's a tough one for me. It's a really tough one. I think I'm just going to go Saruki in just because he's freaking been blazing people lately. Probably go Saruki in with the TKO. Ooh. Maybe third round. Fair enough. I, um... I'm staying firmly aboard the Gamrat uh, hype train here. I think he gets his, uh, I think it would be his fourth consecutive um, win inside the UFC octagon. Um, Gamrat by decision in, uh, or sorry, by submission in round four. Go championship round. Okay. Yeah. We'll see. We it's going to be a good one. This, I, I'm I'm super excited for this fight. This is this might not be like the biggest fight name value or you know rankings wise, but this is this gonna is be a damn good fight. You know what I mean? It, it's going to deliver. It's just like mm -hmm. a lot of this card too. Uh, I'm excited. A little lesser known people, but also with in cards like that, it almost always delivers. Um, we'll see if we can get a solid card to back up what was a banger of the year. Uh, possibly when it comes to UFC Austin. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in this week and catching our UFC Talk uh, edition number at 92. Of course, we covered UFC Austin, the drama between Nate Diaz and Dana White as that continues to unfold. Um, Ali Abdella Baziz, you know, however the hell you want to pronounce his last name. I'm not great. Not as bad as Shell Sutton, though. Um, and his desire to keep his fighters in the conversation of the public, no matter how stupid of a conversation it may be, and who you think is the currently the most exciting fighter at the moment. Um, let's uh, know how excited are you for uh, UC Vegas 57 as well. Super excited to see. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the hell out of UC Austin. Hopefully you did not bet on a second round TKO um, um, for Joaquin Buckley. And I hope you guys enjoy the card this weekend. But Blake, your thoughts. Your thoughts on Josh Emmett's tiki tattoo in one word or phrase. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's uh, it's pretty solid. It's good I like tattoo. the colors on it. I think it's 
Yeah. I'm a fan of his tattoos. He has some good tattoos. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Some I, of the I best definitely like the coloring. Right. Right. Big, big green fan. Big green fan. You, you like the Hulk? Go and get Hulk tattoo? No, not, not really. No. Okay. Not Blake really a doesn't. huge superhero, dude. I don't blame you. Batman is, or I guess the only superhero we support is uh, Black Man. <laughs> yeah, Black yeah. Man. Shout out Black Man. That's the guy. <laughs> that is the, the guy. Um, thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in this week. Make sure to check out the rest of the content we got coming out this week. MMA related uh, later this week, we got um, another interview coming out um, with the local uh, fighter up here in Idaho, one of the um, state's top-ranked amateur fighters, the undefeated Ray um, Lolly. He is t- getting his first shot at MMA Gold um, this Saturday in Utah. So you want to go ahead and check him out because this guy's a freaking stud. He's a savage. He's like a little ball of piss and vinegar, and he is going to cave someone's skull in here real soon. You're going to want to catch that one. Like I said, that is going to be dropping on Friday. Go ahead, um, head on over to the fourthandlong.com or the fourthandlong.com forward slash MMA to stay up to date on everything. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at fourth and long, uh, media on, um, and also you can catch Blake at Blake or Blake C one one nine four on on Instagram. I, I think in like Blake, B Campbell or Blake Campbell or something like that on on, on Twitter. You, um, find him. He he. He's slacking on the tweets, but, you know, it's okay because he normally gets some fingers out there. And normally when he's on his game, you see him arguing with some random people. And it's very entertaining. (laughs) (laughs) Well, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, have a great day. Have a great week. And we will see you next time on UFC Talk. Yeah.